the common modalités de gouvernance My name is uh, Tomislav Tomashevich. I'm uh, 31 years old. Uh, I come from Croatia. Um, I'm active in, mostly in environmentalist movement for the past 13 years, uh, mostly on, on international level. Uh, so I was involved in sustainable development process in the United Nations, all the summits, uh, Johannesburg, Rio Plus 20, etc. And also I was involved in uh, Croatian environmentalist movement as I was director of the Friends of the Earth Croatia. And uh, I discovered commons as a concept uh, pretty much uh, after the Elner Ostrom's Nobel, Nobel Award. And, uh, and then I discovered that there's a, a kind of a movement of scholars and activists who are trying to uh, promote this idea and I found it quite useful uh, because we had a lot of uh, campaigns in Croatia where we were kind of in dilemma of fighting uh, against the privatization of different social spheres of life but at the same time we were also very unsatisfied with the kind of corrupted public uh, services and the state elites who were basically controlling the services and using it for their own benefit instead of the benefit of the people. So it was kind of a, a lose-lose situation. Uh, and we then saw the, the commons as kind of a third way and a third approach where, where it's uh, actually a kind of social practice uh, where there's a fair access to these resources, where there's uh, a real social control not just a formal social control, and where there's sustainable use of these uh, resources in kind of collective action. First of all, I mean, as with many other languages, uh, the word commons in Croatian does not work. We would again need to do the common goods, uh, where, so it would be zajednička dobra. But as you know, common goods is not the perfect uh, word, and it's more. It has an already a, this kind of even classical economic connotation, and it's used in classical economics. Uh, so, it's not perfect translation, I would say. Uh, so, but we use zajednička uh, dobra or common goods. We actually use that in campaign. Uh, we. We are now trying to build a coalition of different social movements in Croatia, which actually would be called a platform for the common good. Uh, which would then kind of, we we see this we see the po political tactics or, uh, around commons as kind of pluralistic in a way. So we see the the the, the need for uh, commons reproduction. So creating commons outside of the, as much as possible outside of the domain of the market and the state, but also we see the need to kind of uh, reclaim some of the public spheres and make it a real common. We also see the need to fight the privatization of some of the public spheres, because we also think that if, for example, if the austerity measures continue uh, as we see now in Greece, we also think that the social tissue and the social bonds might uh, be so bad that the potential for commons might be, very, might be uh, lower. So we also see the need to connect with different social movements uh, of the old left, for example, who are uh, fighting these kind of processes. So that's why I uh, we think that this kind of name might be uh, a good a good thing because we are also trying to find the common platform which unites these different uh, approaches, maybe with different ideologies and different ontologies, but uh, with a kind of common uh, uh, interest to to coordinate the common struggle. So that's why the word "common" is su such such a good word. And common, I mean, it's used sometimes common, sometimes common, depend on the authors. But it's quite good, for me it's quite a good word uh, to be as it's action-oriented 
and for me it's kind of inviting people to to kind of focus on the 90% of the things that we agree <laughs> instead of uh, focusing on 10% of the things that we disagree uh, so so I, I kind of use it also pragmatically in a way I think that we should be more pragmatic and action oriented uh, but also, of course, I, I think the theoretical uh, uh, articulation is also needed. That kind of uh, that these conferences are really useful because they are kind of bringing these uh, different theories and different uh, uses of the word commons a little bit com more together. And when I say together, I don't mean that some of the, that one author got it right and everybody and there should be a hege hegemony of that. But I'm kind of believing that also as with different cultures I think we can all learn from each other and I think that like, the one culture is perfect and I think different cultures can take good stuff from other cultures so I, I kind of see that also with the theories I think the different theories can use good parts of different theories and at the end there might be some kind of convergence which would then be an added value to the previous uh, situation. I'm quite new actually in this and uh, I'm now reading much more about the comments uh, and I think the, the book uh, that was produced by, by Polier and Helfrich is quite useful because it's a wide range of essays and different perspectives on the comments from different authors and uh, uh, I, yeah I find it uh, inspiring and also I came to the conference because I wanted to see I mean, different ideas, to see how is this, uh, is there really a commons movement? So how much is that actually uh, coherent? And, uh, and to see what's the future, what, what are the trends, and also to, to find uh, new ways of collaboration, of course, because uh, I'm also a member in Croatia of the of the green left, green left think tank, which is called Group 22. Uh, and it's a bunch of young people, uh, uh, a group of young people, well-educated with uh, uh, big international experience. And we try to theoretically and uh, through empirical research to see new uh, paradigms, which might uh, better explain what's happening today in the world and also which might better give direction for the future uh, action, be it political action or, or be it more experimentation action. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that, I think I got that, uh, what I expected on the conference, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with uh, what I experienced here. It was surprising to see so many people uh, it's from very different geographical places in the world, very different backgrounds, professionally, academic backgrounds, different disciplines, uh, different uh, activists, doing different actions uh, in digital uh, sphere or in the environmental sphere or in the education sphere, etc. So it's quite diverse and, and it seems big, which is a, a kind of surprise to me because so far I just met mostly uh, Bollier, Silke, uh, on different occasions of the conference that we organized. Uh, and also I, I, think, uh, I think it's still... A, uh, quite pluralist and uh, and uh, I think it's still this convergence that I was talking about is still not there I think it's still not very coherent I wouldn't say it's completely dispersed but I wouldn't say also it's very coherent so it seems that this kind of discussion is still going on and and uh, and for me uh, for me I mean Maybe that's because of my activist background, which I combine with my theoretical uh, and academic research. I, I'm now currently student of master in Cambridge University, uh, and then I'm going to go back to Croatia and continue with the activism and with the, uh, the research. Uh, for me, it was uh, I, I, I find it I think it's really important to emphasize the political dimension of the commons uh, because uh, I think sometimes. It it might be, uh, I, it I, it's also it all depends. I mean, on who do you ask? I mean, how many time do we have for change? I mean, there are so many challenges. There are social challenges, and things are worsening. For example, in Europe, uh, 
uh, the the gap between the rich and poor in the in the world is expanding. Uh, and also, when you look at the environmental threats, then people are saying uh, that uh, maybe also we don't have much time. When you look at the climate change, and how will all these threats uh, influence our possibilities for controlled democratic transition? But if we take this uh, serious, and if we don't have much time, then my question is, uh, how much time do we have for a uh, kind of experimentation? And actually, how much time do we have uh, that we need to take some political action? And then, and this is def definitely very difficult. I mean, what political action? But I think uh, the the example of uh, what they are doing in Italy is something that I think should be inspiring for all. I think the uh, the the commons is always political. It's always contested, one way or another. I think even the reproduction, the work, the commoning is political act in itself. So we should not be afraid of that, and we should acknowledge that. And uh, and this is challenging the current ways of doing, the current political structures, the current hierarchical structures, and. Uh, Without more political action, this will not change. So I think there is kind of uh, it's important to to have this experimentation, which is kind of autonomous from the state and the market. But also, I think it's important to engage with the state and the market and kind of contest uh, the existing commons which we have and we might lose them, and to contest uh, the losing of the public sphere of health system, the education system, because we, when we lose that, it might be very difficult to get it back. So in the so that's, that's the thing. I mean, we have to focus all the time on these parallel tracks. I think fight this privatization and commodification, but also ask for the real social control of that public sphere so it's not just used for the benefit of the state-controlled uh, elites. But, uh, but I don't think also that we can afford not to engage with the state. And yes, I think even maybe a political uh, kind of, maybe even a party or kind of a political movement that will uh, that would go into this uh, state politics sphere will be needed. I would say sometimes. Uh, I think, as I said, Hugo Matei, for example, uh, I think he addressed it quite, uh, quite uh, clearly. And uh, Saki, Saki Bailey, obviously. And uh, and the silk also sometimes. So I think I think uh, it's really difficult. Uh, I think there are a lot of things that that should be overcome. And I know it is a slow process. It should not be forced. I mean, people really have to feel comfortable on discussing these things. But I just think that we should not be afraid. And also, I don't think we should be afraid of the initiatives of leadership, because I think for some people. Leadership is the same as authority, which I don't see it that way. I don't think we should be afraid of taking initiatives and be courageous about that, like, for example, the, they did in Italy. Uh, and this doesn't have to be authoritarian. I mean, it can be still democratic, consensus-based even. But some people have to take that initiative. I mean, social movements usually have some leaders one way or another. I mean, so, uh, and I think that's something that hopefully slowly this kind of, uh, uh, kind of, uh, this kind of um, good feeling about this, this kind of uh, f sense of security talking about these issues will c hopefully happen in this, in this arena of people, that people kind of feel empowered, that it is okay to take initiative, that they are courageous enough to take the initiative, and usually these people will be will face the biggest burden. But it happened like that always. I mean, with all the social movements for civil liberties in U.S., these people, I mean, who take the courage, I mean, they get the biggest number of attacks and blows. But you know, leaders of social movements are not uh, are not uh, are not kind of. Uh, it's not like a, a leader kind of seeks people to lead. I mean, people kind of seek leaders, I mean, so you are chosen and then you have this responsibility and you have to do it. I mean, it's not easy. You, nobody nobody asked to be a leader, or Nelson Mandela or Martin Luther King, I mean, they, or, or Malcolm X or I don't know who. I mean, it just happens. But uh, 
but I think that should be kind of uh, recognized and people should not be afraid of that and therefore I, I really again I see these things in Italy quite inspiring because we can design perfect institutions perfect rules of the game as Elnor Ostrom sees institutions but it's not just the matter of design it's always the matter of the struggle the contest uh, of the current structures and uh, it's like you know you can have a perfect design but if it's not used I mean then so so there therefore it's both I think it's both it's a, a question of the design and experimentation and kind of social peer-to-peer -peer, uh, process of uh, trying to get the best rules of the game, the best functioning institutions, but also it's uh, about uh, the political struggle mm -hmm. with the current institutions. I see in that way my role also. I'm, I w I'm an activist. I was uh, doing and leading advocacy campaigns that were trying to challenge uh, the state and, uh, and the market and the companies but also I see the need for theory and to understand what is happening, why is it happening, to understand how to act and where to act. So for me, it's not one or the other. I think both is important. And not everybody has to do both. Uh, but this should be coordinated. So people who do the theory and people who do the action should, should have some links and coordination. But, uh, but again, I mean, uh, what they did in Italy, uh, he... I, I mean, that's the thing, I mean, you need to engage with the state, you need to change the laws, you need, to, that showed basically that the commons also need protection of the state sometimes, they, or they need at least to remove the barriers that, that the state is making. And therefore, I think uh, that it's kind of showing that you, have, that you cannot just uh, pretend that the state is not there and just uh, close in your autonomous zone and hope for the best. I, I don't think that we can afford that luxury. So, so yeah, I think, we, I, I think uh, when you do this practice and you do the activism, yeah, you have to advocate towards the market and towards the state and also experiment in your autonomous zone as much as possible. So that's how I see my role in Croatia and we, will, we are actually thinking to, to, to do something similar they did in Italy uh, regarding the referendum on water. We, Croatia is now accessing uh, European Union in 1st of July and we want to actually join to the, we are thinking to join to the pan-European uh, uh, initiative for referendum uh, or I mean legis legislative initiative regarding the right on water and here I see I mean okay Croatia is accessing the EU so then let's become the, the part of EU platform for action on water and let's use what they did in Italy in trying to commun communalize their water supply and let's see how we can do that in Croatia.